Hello! In this video, I'm going to walk you through your ACT English practice assignment. So, over the past two weeks, I asked you to make an account on Varsity Tutors and then to take a diagnostic test for the ACT English section and the reading section. So, this week, and when I say this week, I mean the time period really between April 7th and April 12th, so the the week leading up to that ACT, um, I'm, I'm asking you to do some practice. And you guys, since you're online and really directing your own learning this year or this semester, you have the opportunity to choose what you want to study for on this, on, for the ACT. So instead of, you know, telling you that you have to review comma rules, you know what, if you aced punctuation errors, don't study that. If you aced that section, you're good on commas. Don't review commas. Review something else. So the example might be, let's say you missed a lot of questions on the agreement errors, subcategory, errors, subcategory. In that case, you should um, do some work learning more about that section. So, there are several steps of what I'm asking you to do, and that's what I'm going to walk you through. So, um, you want to go back to your diagnostic test. Again, here's my diagnostic test that I took quite a few weeks ago. Um, so, you're going to want to find the, the parts that you, the areas you need the most improvement in. Um, and again, some folks are going to have more areas for improvement than others. So if, let's say, you got 20 out of 60 right, you're probably going to have several areas to choose from. If you got, like, 50 out of 60, you're not going to have as much to choose from. But I do want you guys to choose something that you personally need to improve in. So in my case, I decided I was going to look at verb formation errors because I missed two in that category and I decided it would be a good idea to review that. Um, so one thing that you can do, um, I'm going to explain the thing you have to do later, but there's a can do part to this too. So you can click on that, on that subcategory and it's going to come up with example questions and it's going to have the correct answer here and an explanation. And if you're someone who learns best by reading a lot of examples and explanations, you, you might do that first before you take a practice test. Um, I know I personally learn best just by doing something and then reading the explanations later or by looking up the information as I go. So that's another option. So what I definitely want you to do is some practice test. So if you go up here where it says all ACT English resources, go to the 203 practice test and you're going to find the concept that you need some work in. So in this case, one of mine was the verb verb formation and I'm asking you to do enough tests so that it adds up to 30 questions. So I might just want to do verb tense errors practice test for 40 questions. Just do the whole thing. It says the average time spent is nearly five hours but there's no way that's accurate. That's probably someone closing out of their screen. Like in, in reality that's probably going to take like under 20 minutes. Just to be honest. So you might as well do the whole thing if you're doing one with 40. Um, the other thing you can do is add a variety up. So you might do um, this one for eight, and then other verb usage errors for seven, that would get you to 15. And then let's say you needed to work on revising, writing and revising effectively. So you might do another one for eight, that would get you to 23. And then you might do 25, 27, 29, and then maybe a six question test, or maybe there's like one, they're tasked with one question. So you could do those. The thing is for each of the tests you do, I'm asking you to do two things. One is take a screenshot of it, of your score, and attach that on Classroom, just like you did for the diagnostic test. That's simply verification that you took the test. 
And if it won't attach on Classroom, email it to me. Attach it to an email and do that. We'll be fine. So, you're taking your test. Um, then, um, there is an attached worksheet on Classroom. So, I want you to record the names of the tests that you take and the number of questions. That's just, that's just to keep track of them. I want it all centralized in one place. So, for mine, I took inserting and removing content. So, um, that's, I took a very short one just, just for an example. And removing content, it was two questions and I got two of them right. Um, so then you would list all the others that you take. You, if you're taking a large, a bunch of tests, you're probably going to need to add a row. Um, this looks different on an iPad, but um, you do a right click and then add a add a row below. And that'll help you add a row. So then the second part of this is that I'm asking you to actually not just take the test, you know, <laughs> go through the motions doing random answers. Not that you guys would do that. You guys wouldn't do that. Um, but I want you to list things that you learned. I'm asking you just to choose five things that you learn in all this studying or five things that you understand better. So the ways, there are several ways you can go about doing that. One way is that you can look at the, the, the questions and the explanations. So let's say I kind of guessed maybe a little bit in number two. Um, this works best if you read the explanations for things that you missed. But if you got something right and you know that you guessed on that one, look at the explanation. So um, the concept here is inserting content. Let's see. So I might want to read through this. The last two sentences of the second paragraph give us a sense of Paul's internal state. So I might, I might write that I learn, this is really about transitions, this adding and removing content. In this case, it's really about transitioning from one paragraph to the next. So I might write um, transitions between paragraphs. And then um, explanation or example Let's see, for one question, I needed to, to write about the character's internal state at the beginning of a para paragraph. To do this, I needed to look at the last few sentences in the previous paragraph. So you might explain how you how, how you got to the right answer. Um, that's what works for this one. If it's a more, um, because this is a more um, abstract concept, the test I took um, on adding and removing content, if the test or concept you're looking at is one about punctuation, you know what? Give an example using a semicolon correctly. So if that's what you learned, if you learned that to, let me, let me put this down as an example. Use semicolons to connect two sentences, aka clauses, without, without a conjunction. So maybe that's something I learned. So I could write an explanation, like you either need a comma and a conjunction or just a semicolon. And then I can have an example. The cat ran up the tree. The dogs, um, <laughs> what did the dog do? The dog remained on the ground barking ferociously. Okay, so maybe that's an example of you know, using a semicolon correctly. You could just use the correct example from the question that you missed. Um, copy and paste the right answer. I just want, I just want you to show evidence that you're, you're studying and you're reviewing things that you need to review. That is the primary goal here. The goal isn't, you know, to say, oh, 
you you only got 15 out of 30 right in all these practice tests, so you get 15 out of 30. No. Um, as far as taking the practice test, you're getting participation credit for answering 30 questions. Um, but this this section right here on the five things learned, that section is worth 10 points. So you do need to do it and, and put in your ideas and, and show evidence of learning. So that is this assignment. Oops, that's not it. So that's what you're doing for this assignment. I will also be posting one that um, for the ACT reading section that might look slightly different. Um, so there we go. Let me know if you have any questions.